How are you? Well, I'm up here in the beehive. I have not had a whole lot of time up here uh, since we got back, and so things were piled up around here, and I I decided that today I really had to get up here because not only is Quilt Show coming, da -dum, da -dum, da -dum, uh, I have to put the labels on my quilts because I have to turn them in this next week because then I'll be traveling a little bit again. So um, I was motivated to get up here <laughs> and once I got up here I just saw these little piles of things that I went, whoo, I need to, I'm one of those people that I can't work well in chaos. I think you have to be a designer to be able to do that. Um, I am too distracted by the things around me, and so there's no way I could uh, not clean up and check out what all these little piles were. So I'm going to share some of that with you. I, um, you remember that I was having an iron problem on the road, and so I finally, after checking every quilt shop, along the way, gave up and ordered it on Amazon. I haven't used it yet, but I am so going to try this out, and I am excited that I don't have a cord to deal with and in a small space, because we actually, uh, with our uh, travel trailer, are, uh, although I have more counter space, I have to say I have more counter space, it feels smaller than the RV, and I think because of the cab added that spaciousness. Uh, to the RV. So I need to be efficient in that travel trailer. And I can't wait to go. I think uh, that's all we talk about is where do you want to go next? But we had a grandson and the thought of leaving is like, mm, I don't know. Maybe just for a little bit. Also, trying to figure out when to get out of here because Central Oregon is the place to be for the solar eclipse. So we're kind of we're kind of trying to plot and plan is what we're doing. Well, what I did though when I got home, I was able to finish my grandson's quilt. And this is a quilt by uh, the fabric is by Moda in uh, Ginger Bear, and I think that's how you say it or. Gin, ginger burr, hmm. and the pattern is thicket. So you get, uh, in order to make this quilt, you need two panels, pre-printed panels, one of big animals and one of little animals, and then a, a, a layer cake of the complementary fabrics, which are all the gray and the blacks, and then I think like two, two and a quarter yards of a background, which is the cream color. So you have animals left over for other projects, and oh my gosh, if you go online and you put in a thicket quilt and you look at all the images, people are so darn talented. They are just really talented. And so um, my next step is to quilt. And I've had comments online that ask me how I layer and quilt. And so, what I can tell you is, I am a person who has a bit of asthma. Well, quite a bit of asthma. And so, I can't use the spray basted. And I don't want to spend hours on the floor pin basting. So, I use fusible batting. And the fusible batting I use is... Hobbs Heirloom Fusible Batting. There are other fusible battings, but they are only fusible on one side, which doesn't make sense to me. This is, has fusible on both sides. So it is somewhat of a trick to layer this, but when G gets back from hiking, I'm going to show you how I do this. Now, I have several of the crib size, which is... 45 by 60. I use it for baby quilts, table runners, wall hangings, and then whatever's left over, I roll it up and put it back in the bag 
and use it for another project. But unfortunately, this quilt here is 56 by 64, so not, it's too big for the baby. So I'm going to take my queen size, which I always have a couple of these around, and cut it up like two lap quilts. And then I'll save the remaining piece and use it for another project. Um, it'll be more challenging, but you'll get to see it step by step. So that is what I plan to do. Four quilts to label before quilt show. <coughs> um, and I have to label those and turn them in this week. And although my girlfriend Linda is so clever with her labels, I don't have time to be clever. I need to be efficient. <laughs> so I have this box of labels. And what I do is I choose my label. I put fusible on the back. I write my information. And then I needle turn the edge of the label onto the quilt. And um, I might just buttonhole around the edge of these just because I think it might look cute. So we'll see. But I have that project to do today. Now, also, my high school classmate, Danielle, she will occasionally tag me on Facebook with some quilt thing. I, I, it's like having the little devil on my shoulder because I, I try not to get too excited. But, you know, I mean, when you have someone tagging you about something, and when she tagged me about this, I immediately ordered it. I, I couldn't help myself. Look at this. Is that not just the most beautiful little wall hanging and it is 46 by 35 so it's not like huge and I don't know I just fell in love with it it just made me smile isn't that cute this is by Sally Menke and she I ordered this uh, pattern off her Etsy shop and it's etsy.com slash shop slash Sally with a capital S S A L L Y capital M A N K E. Not that I'm trying to get anyone else to <laughs> do this with me, but just know I'm doing this. I was I was shocked when I came home too because, you know, there were boxes and packages, not all, all caused by me, mind you, but, um, you know, my, my beautiful, beautiful, um, tracing table. <laughs> I had a brain fart right there. <laughs> you know, my light table that I used to trace, I just love that. And, um, the gal, it's so, um, it's so me, or I'm sorry, it's me so, me so, down in Valencia, California, sent me a new slim LED under the cabinet light for my light table, an LED one. How cool is that? Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You are so sweet. And she she has made some postcards for me, too. I mean, people are just so dang talented. I, and the problem is, is that I would like to try to mail one of these, but I like them, too. I want to keep them, too. So, I don't know. Uh, I, I'm, I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to send them out and then donate them, donate some to the postcard auction. I should do that. Okay, we're almost caught up. We're almost caught up. When, uh, you have to know that I love uh, Sue Spargo. She not only is a wonderful designer, fabulous stitcher, She's just a really good soul. And she's as sweet as can be. So I kind of like all her stuff. In fact, I started a Facebook group 
uh, called Friends of Sue Spargo. So we could kind of keep up on Sue Spargo stuff. The other side of the coin is I'm more of a primitive girl. I do modern things for mostly for friends, families, you know, that kind of thing. But a lot of stuff that I do for myself is really um, more primitive or the color scheme is different. So I tend to not uh, do a lot of Sue's patterns per se. I love her stitching. So I did, you know, when I got my bag, my Yazzy bag, I did do that, uh, uh, order the pattern for the front of this, and this is wool, and so that you can see um, the stitching on that is, it's just fun. I love her stitching. And I loved this quilt. But I am not talented in the sense that you can, uh, I can take any book or pattern and turn it into something I like. I'm really fused about what it looks like on the cover. That's just a shortcoming of mine. It's who I am. So this one, I loved this Crimson Tweed, but not so much the color. And so I never did it. I, I couldn't envision it any other way until I went to the Old World Quilt Shop in Cave Creek and they had a finished crimson tweed in more primitive colors. So you can go online to Old World Quilt Shop and check under their block of the months and you can see the one that they did. I fell in love with it because it not only was Sue, but it was the colors that I loved. So I signed up for that block of the month. And you can see from here, I got the first one yesterday and the colors are have a little bit more tan and brown to them. And there's some yummy velvet. I can't wait to figure out where to do that. Maybe I'll emboss it a little bit. <laughs> so, needless to say, I'm hooked on that, and I'm doing that block of the month. Other than that, I am about in control of the beehive. I am going to keep plugging away. <laughs> bringing you along <laughs> and when G gets back from hiking we shall layer a quilt. Well G's back from hiking nice shower and is here to video us layering a quilt. <laughs> so we're ready to layer Silas's quilt. Now as I said before I use fusible Hobbs 8020 batting. It has a fusible on both sides. Um, I can't uh, really find it locally, so I do uh, mail order it either from Fabric Depot or Connecting Threads, I think, also has it. And I, I like the product. Now, with Silas's quilt, it is larger than the baby size of the fusible. So what I'm going to do is take a queen size and cut it down. So it'll probably actually do two, um, like, throw quilts. And that that's almost a throw quilt size. So you can see how um, sticky it is. Although it doesn't feel sticky to the hand. But I can tell it's peeling off, and I'm just going to unroll it. I'm going to set it here for a minute because I want to tell you about the backing. Now this is a tip I got from my twisted sisters who are a group of gals who come down from Gig Harbor area to quilt and they go to like Rosh or TJ Maxx and I think on Tuesdays is senior day and since a lot of us qualify for that you get a discount and they buy these um, they're like a minky throw. And so the original price, this is a Tommy Hilfiger um, 
throw. You know, it's already it's actually a finished blanket. And they use these for the backs of their quilt. This, uh, the price originally at uh, TJ Maxx was $19.99 for the whole backing of this quilt. And um, because I went on a senior day, I got a discount. So it is so soft and I think it's going to be perfect for the back of um, Silas's quilt. So what I'm doing is I'm choosing to lay it out so that the pretty side is back and I'm going to spread it out just to see how much of this. I know I won't need it but I could maybe use this for another one. So I'm going to see if this quilt will fit. I don't think it will fit widthwise, but we'll try it. Oh my gosh, it is. It is going to fit. How cool is that? So I might, oh I'll have, oh no it's not. It's not going to fit. See? So I am going to have to go the other way. Dang it. Dang it, Dorothy. But that's okay. Because it is perfect this way. Actually, it fits pretty good this way. So that actually means I'm only going to have um, one raw edge. Now there's no science to this. I am going to lay this out. I'm going to kind of see how long I need to cut it. So, and I want to give myself a couple of inches. So I'm going to measure how many inches from the bottom I want to cut this off. You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I won't cut it off because Minky is kind of, kind of, well, I'm thinking out loud here. I'm talking and thinking out loud. Yeah, I don't want to deal with all this extra. So, I am going to cut off 22 inches off this back. to I have my backing cut the size that I want and I've left three sides in the original stitching so that will make it not curl up and I'm going to unwrap this batting and let's see I wonder I can get this batting if it goes this way Hmm. Yeah. Let's see if this is going to fit this way. Oh, yeah. So 
I am going to be able to cut this here. So once you're ready with your three layers, and they're fairly smooth, I have a hot iron and I always set it to steam and I just start pressing this, this down, not really going over the edge. I'm readjusting as I go and the back because I use steam the back is sticking slightly which is great because we're going to flip it over and press it from the back side. Now the batting you can peel up the quilt if you see a wrinkle you can lift it up and smooth it out. So now the front is fused and I'm going to flip it over and take care of the back. So. And mainly this is because you don't want um, you know, there to be wrinkles on the back. So if you uh, notice, I have a wrinkle down here at the bottom on my back. And with fusible batting, I can just kind of lift it up and straighten it out, smooth it out. Because uh, the back is always going to end up with a little wrinkle. Um, with this fusible, as you fuse the front side, you can't really tell how smooth the back is. But that's how easy it was to get the wrinkle out. And that's it. Less than 30 minutes to layer a throw size quilt. Now I've never actually uh, fused one of these um, throw blankets on the back so that worked out pretty slick. 
um, what I will do next, see how that stays all together? And the front looks nice and the fusel batting is great. So what I do with these leftover pieces, I have big chunks of the fusible because this was a queen size, is I just roll these back up for another um, baby quilt wall hanging. I stick it back in the bag to protect the fusible part and put it back in my batty stash. And then with this quilt, I usually what I do is I just run a quick walking foot uh, based stitch around the edge um, just because that's the a part that might come up with a lot of manipulation. But uh, for the most part, I have not had any problems with this. And like I said before, with my asthma, I can't use a spray based it. I, I, you know, even with a mask, it doesn't feel good. So now I'm ready to quilt this quilt. <laughs> Easy peasy.